Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Gas Mask Reader. This time around, I'm talking about a book that I've actually been looking forward to since I heard about it a few months ago. It was just released last week. That was the, the Monster on the Road is Me by J.P. Romney. Yeah, I mean, I've been looking forward to this one because it actually sounded really interesting based off of the plot. And I actually first heard about it because the author, J.P. Romney, hosts the, is one of the hosts of the Bibli Biblioclast podcast, which he hosts with his wife, Rebecca Romney, who, if you're somebody like me who used to watch the reality shows on the History Channel, you would recognize as being the lady who used to come on to Pawn Stars whenever they'd need somebody to appraise a book. Now, this particular book is set in Japan. The general plot is it's set in um, Kusaka Town, I think. I, and oh yes, and I will apologize in advance because I am certainly going to mispronounce all of the Japanese names because despite the fact that I tend to watch a fair amount of anime and read some manga and occasional light novels and such, I still uh, suck at pronouncing Japanese names. Yes, it is a small town known as Kusaka. The main character in this is known as Koda. And he's a weird kid who suffers from what is first believed to be narcolepsy, which will cause him to occasionally you know, just fall asleep for no apparent reason. Because of this, his parents were a bit on the weird side, make him wear a gigantic oversized bicycle helmet that's described as being shaped like a watermelon. But in his town, things are starting to go a bit weird. Uh, basically, it starts with the, one of his schoolmates known as Aiko starts talking about how she needs to help crows because the crows are being... and she needs to find a three-legged crow and the crows are being held prisoner by a monster or something, and then she kills herself by drinking cleaning fluid at, at their school, and pretty soon another student commits suicide, and then it, you know, Code ends up meeting with, up with a fox spirit, and it's revealed that it's all, because, everything that's there that's happening are because of an evil mountain demon, and he actually has magic powers and has to, you know, help fight. It's, you know, the plot is fairly... Standard for one of these young adult fantasy novels. You know, the kid with magical powers has to help things. It's got a nice Japanese setting, which is good. And well, why don't I give you a little, read a little bit from the book. Eiko was the first. Nothing about her was that different, really. She liked things any 15-year-old girl in Japan likes. Flowers, I guess. Hair accessories. Bows and stuff. Hello Kitty, maybe? I have no idea what girls like, which is why I've been on exactly one, two, oh wait, no dates ever. I sat behind Aiko for two years, and all of that time, I only managed to have two real conversations with her. One of them was in homeroom, the last was at her funeral. It was the crows. Aiko started seeing them at the beginning of first year. A few weeks later, she died. Coincidence? Could be. There are crows all over Japan, but the crows of Kusaka Town are not normal crows. They watch you, clicking their beaks and flicking their wings, hungry to break into your mind. They'll push their way into the deepest tunnels of your thoughts, and once they're inside, you can never get them out. I really like the writing style on this one. It's very good, especially for a first novel. And it's got some really funny bits in it. You know, some of that stuff in there, just the two paragraphs I read there, I thought were it was pretty funny. And it's not, you know, the most hilarious stuff I've ever read. But it's still got some really good bits. And I really like it. And, you know, it's something where I, despite the fact that it, the main character is kind of a moron, which, you know, book that's actually narrated in the first person is a pretty good thing because 
I mean, I happen to be a big fan of P.G. Woodhouse, and his Bertie Wooster novels are some of my favorites, and, you know, that's books narrated in the first person by an idiot, so... But, you know, I gotta point out, though, that J.P. Romney is not a, not P.G. Woodhouse. I mean, he's good, but he's not that good. And he's funny, but he's not that funny. And I really like this book. You know, it's great. If, if you're somebody who has an interest in Japanese fiction, I mean, this isn't, you know, it's set in Japan, and he actually spent time in Japan. So, he, you know, knows a good bit about the setting. This is, you know, you should really read it, because it's certainly a very strange book. I mean, you don't generally read a lot of books set in Japan with evil mountain demons and boys who can steal thoughts, because that's what Koda's superpower is. I'm, no point in trying to keep spoilers, because I don't give a crap about spoilers. Uh, the villain is really e really nasty and evil. I mean, he kills quite a few people and drives into suicide. And it's got some really funny spots, and it's a really strange sort of plot. But overall, it's really good. I, I'm going to give it a, a rating of four gas masks out of five. And I'll definitely say you should probably give it a shot because I think it's really good and I hope J.P. Romney writes some more books because I'd like to read them. And that's all I've got to say about this book, which you know, is probably a good thing because I am just babbling like a crazy person. So I'll be back soon with more reviews where I once again babble like a babbly person. Goodbye. If you like this video, please click subscribe or watch some of my older videos. If you think the book I reviewed sounds interesting, buy a copy. There are always links to the Amazon store in the description for this book and any other books I mentioned. If you have any suggestions on other books I could read or any other comments, queries, insults, or anything else you want to say, please feel free to mention it in the comments section.